Right now it is time for Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Workman. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, Simon Loses His Tummy and her latest book, Before Her Voice Was Still. And she's been patiently waiting for us uh, to stop talking and get to her. Good morning, Dr. Workman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always enjoy listening to you, so I think, please don't ever have to rush. <laughs> why, why don't we, we should put Hannah's mother in the intro. Hannah's mother? Yes. Me? Yes. Or the dog? <laughs> you. Are you. Oh, me. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to bark. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So your blog, you 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 can have your blog posting, then I'll talk. <laughs> okay. Well, given the fact that Halloween is going to be coming, whether we are prepared in terms of virus safety or not, um, it's, it's coming by next week. You know, I thought it was it was timely to talk about what is going to happen to all the Halloween candy that is still piled high in super, on supermarket uh, shelves and, and also convenience stores or drugstores like CVS. Um, and I was really shocked, I, Jill, I must say, back in August when I saw uh, these, these bags of, you know, snack-sized candies being piled on the shelves in my supermarket. And indeed, the way the supermarket entrance was set up, you know, to, you know, to make sure that people move in the right direction, you had to go through almost a gauntlet of, of, of candy uh, on both sides of an aisle in order to get to a place where you could actually buy real food. And then, of course, as the news came out as, what are we going to do about Halloween? And one thing up, one party or trick-or-treating or, you know, an outdoor event was canceled after another, I really wondered what was going to happen to all this candy. You know, it's just simply not a very good combination of no one to give the candy to except yourself and a lot of candy to um, be purchased. Uh, and and I, I think that uh, we may actually be seeing, you know, really an unfortunate consequence of the lack of trick-or-treating because people, you know, really use as an excuse the fact that they're going to be giving candy away to their uh, neighborhood kids or maybe bringing it to work. And, and in the old days, you know, putting it in a little plastic, orange plastic pumpkin on your desk or on the, you know, the desk of any kind of uh, retail establishment, even other than maybe at your dentist's office, you know, these these. Uh, containers of little candy snacks that really feel very tempting to, to eat, you're, the, you're going to have that candy in your kitchen or your pantry or maybe stuck in a drawer in your bedroom, and you're going to snack on it. And one of the things that makes the snacking of, of these candies so irresistible is the time of year when Halloween comes. I mean, I wonder if Halloween came instead of Memorial Day <laughs> when the the, the daylight hours are so long and the wind weather is so good and you have the um, joy of, of anticipating summer in front of you with all the outdoor activities and all the wonderful you know, healthy things to eat. I wonder if candy consumption would be high at that point. But unfortunately, with Halloween, it corresponds to the beginning of the darkest time of the year. You know, we, we go to standard time. It means that the days become dark in the afternoon before you sort of turn around and realize it. Um, and it, it's not much lighter in the morning. Uh, and the impulse to give into, you know, what we all know is now seasonal affective disorder or winter depression is, is very, very great. And one of the one of the major symptoms of seasonal affective disorder or the winter blues is in, quote, an irresistible craving for sweets. And so here you have Halloween coming along with all these wonderful little snacks that you can pop in your mouth and think to yourself, oh, what is the harm of putting in three little Snicker bars or you know, some Kit Kats or whatever else comes packaged in these tiny little packages? Um, the problem is that after you pop three or four in your mouth, you really are eating the equivalent of an entire candy bar. And if you continue popping them, you may eat the equivalent of six or seven candy bars. And so it's not a good thing to have all this candy around. Um, and in addition, you also have people who look at, you know, the excuse of Halloween to justify bringing candy into the house that they normally never would do. I mean, how many people really feel comfortable walking out of a supermarket with six bags, you know, of candy, you know, especially if they're overweight? It is, you know, something that people might notice. But Halloween, well, you know, I'm going to give it to all my neighbors. And, of course, now you don't have that possibility, but you still may be bringing all that, that Halloween candy home. And you know, it seems to me that maybe this is a time for a wake-up call, 
that maybe we don't have to give out all these snacks. You know, maybe we can celebrate this holiday the way it was, you know, celebrated perhaps a couple hundred years ago, and and turn away from this assumption that Halloween means eating foods that you would normally not put in your mouth and want your children to put into their stomachs at any other time of year. And and, and I think it's really a wake-up call, like a lot of other things that we sort of take for granted that are unhealthy, and now the pandemic is making us re-examine. So maybe people will understand what Halloween really is. Wouldn't that be exciting? Pardon? I said maybe people will understand what Halloween really is. Well, that well, it, it is, and it's actually not the kind of joyous, you know, fun kind of holiday that people, you know, now think it is. But it really was when, when I guess the it's, souls of the dead, it, the souls were, of the saints, wandering it's, through the all. It's you know, all Hallows Eve. It's all Hallows. Yeah. All Hallows Eve. Sorry, all Hallows Eve, and it is the Eve of All Saints Day, which is November first, always. And the next day, November second, is All Souls Day. Exactly. So you know, it, there's it, and it's funny. It is to uh, celebrate, to commemorate. Th- th- there's, I, I've, I'm just looking forward to a bunch of people who, have, you know, if they've come up to the country, and so they're going to be for. I'm sort of struck because you are forced into, despite your overlaid fancy life, you are forced in. You, you can't help but look up. I, I think either a bunch of people are going to go tearing back to the city or they're going to start understanding basically circadian rhythms. And uh, personally, I can't wait because <laughs> it's it's dark. It, the, the, uh, November, for example, just pick a random day, November 5th in New York City, pandemic or no, is the, you know, the color at uh, dusk is just, it's got that purple. You see the lights. You look down. It's just, it's all very lively and, and it, even... even even locked down, it's got that. And right. November 5th, for example, here at that same time, it's black as pitch. And you're not doing anything. No, exactly. That's exactly right. And, and that's, you see, that, that's why the, the, the candy is such a temptation because you are stuck in the house. I mean, you, you're living in a place where maybe there are no sidewalks. You cannot walk outside on the road because there are no street lights. Um, you, you take your life in your hands if you want to go outside after 4 o'clock or 4.30 in the afternoon. And there's nothing to do. I mean, I remember when we had a house in on the Cape, uh, a summer house, but we used to go in the winter, and it was empty and forlorn. And you, you felt, you know, really lonely and vulnerable. And, you know, and, and one of the things you tend to do when you feel this way is to reach for something to eat because it's comfort food. And then, Okay, so you could eat something, you know, as we do, breakfast cereal, which is one of our favorite snacks, which are fat-free. But you have these bags of candy, and there's nobody who's going to, coming around knocking on your door and eating them, no little kids, no, no parties. And it is so easy to just rip open one of those little boxes and pop it in your mouth, you know, choo-choo, and you swallow it, and then take another and another. Um, and and I, I really think that we're going to have to rethink having all these temptations, which do nobody any good at all, except, I guess, the candy manufacturers, uh, to have them sitting in the supermarket saying, buy me and eat me. And that's the last thing you should be doing, especially since obesity is a risk factor for having more of the symptoms of COVID-19. Right. No, And, there, and there's something else, too. It's, it's just... Um... We do know, of course, a lot of people who get candy for the kids and end up, uh, you know. Oh, oh sure. I, I'm buying candy for my kid. Well, my my kid is 63, <laughs> but I'm <laughs> but I don't know. He may come home and do some trick-and-treating. Meanwhile, I'm buying all these candy bars. Gee, what happened to the <laughs> – gee, what happened to the – uh, anyway, all right, well. So with with right, this well, in I mean, mind, ha- have a happy end of uh, of October, regardless of what you do. We'll talk next week anyway. Thank you very much, <laughs> Dr. Bye-bye. Judy Wortman, Food for Mood. And you can hear Judy uh, with Food for Mood uh, right here on Robin Hood Radio Thursday mornings before uh, this week in the Lakeville Journal and online, robinhoodradio.com. Click on On Demand, click on Food for Mood.